Welcome to Popcorn Planet. I am Andy Signor. This is a story I've been working on for a while. I don't know if you guys have ever watched the show Wipeout or seen the news recently about a Wipeout contestant that died. But it actually wasn't their first death. Wipeout actually had reality to show death back in 2009. Uh, the death is still under investigation. This one sort of like uh, disappeared for a while. All of this reminded me, you know what, guys? I never told you my Wipeout story. Yeah. I was on Wipeout. It's that time, America. Not only was I on Wipeout, that was just me. You just missed me. Did you notice that was me? Yeah, that's right. If you watch season three of Wipeout, I was on every single episode because they rotoscoped me at the beginning of every episode. I did the big balls. I uh, I did it all. And uh, it's time to tell the story of Wipeout. All right, in order to do this, I actually was able to find an old journal I wrote about my adventure. Uh, this was back in 2009. This was a long time ago when we did this. This is season three. Uh, but the, the moral of this story is don't do Wipeout. <laughs> That's the moral of this story. This is a depressing story. But I wanted to get this out there uh, because it bothers me. Uh, like, look, I loved watching this show. I, it's hard to not watch a show and laugh. But you really should know what's going on behind the scenes. And yes, yes, we signed up for it. We've seen the show. We're not idiots. But as time has progressed, I, it's, the show has left a bad taste in my mouth. And I feel like it's important to sort of expose, in a way, the truth behind how they shoot Wipeout. All right, so let's go through my journal entry, shall we? This will be fun to go back and reread with you guys. Now, full disclosure, I actually was on Couples Wipeout with my ex-wife. Out of respect to her, I've removed her from this story. I don't want it to make it about her. I only can only speak from my experience anyway. So I'm going to speak about my experience. But just so you know, yes, we were on Couples Edition, which made it a little bit different. It was tag team. And there were 10 or 12 couples. I forget how many. I'll, I'll, as we go through, we'll find out. But the process started about out in Los Angeles. They did an open casting call, and they make you fill out, you bring out something to fill out a form. And I went knowing sort of my production background. I, I, it's easy to win those things if you're crazy. And she was quiet. I was loud. It was a very clear, like, ah, Beauty and the Beast ah, type of vibe. And I... They clearly were like, yes, yes. I remember us auditioning and there were a lot of weirdos there. There was a lot of normal people, a lot of out of shape people, a lot of in shape people. It was a very mixed bag of people that were there. And thankfully I did write all this because I wouldn't have remembered as many of these details. But yeah, it was Monday, October 19th, 2009 when we shot it. We put an alarm went off. We had to set three alarms because you have to get up at 445. We had to get there uh, and it's far. Uh, and, and then I talked about a little bit of the prep because when you get on a show like this, I'm a little out of shape. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, uh, you know, I'm big boned. Uh, and, uh, you know, I was, I had actually gotten in shape, like spark started swimming, tried to get like more running, more active to prepare for my run on the course. And then there was shoes. Uh, I really was, I really took a lot of time to figure out what to wear. And this is what I settled on the Tiva Sun Koski too. After a lot of research, this seemed to be a good, like potentially water shoe slash sneaker. And it, yeah, the shoe was fine, but we'll get to the shoe in a second. It, it was in Santa Clarita canyon country uh on this huge large ranch where they shoot it uh this is like sort of the how it is you can see some sort of uh some stunts and stuff in the background but it really is like sort of a an old graveyard of of, of wipeout pieces here as you're walking around and getting ready for the course and they set them all up on this ranch which films a lot of stuff at this ranch i forget the name of it i don't, I don't want to say anyway just in case it's, it's not public but um they shoot a lot of stuff there's like a big western set uh there's a shower trailer a waiting room trailer and a bathroom trailer uh, and so that's when we finally, we went in to finally saw the people that we'd be competing with for $50,000. Remember, that's what they give you if you win. They get, I think they gave us $15 for the day. They literally gave us each $15, I think, or $20. It was somewhere between five, I didn't write down here. It's like somewhere between 10 and $20, I think, is what we ended up getting paid to be there and, and everything we went through, which was like a union minimum or for, for lunch or something. I, f I forget the, the justification for why we got $20, but it was ridiculous. Didn't even pay us like $200 to be like, take off the day of work. No, they were so cheap. Uh, here's the people uh, that we were fighting against. So you can sort of see a mixed bag, mostly in shape, but a lot of wearing jackets because it was colder than uh, people thought. So this was uh, 12 contestants, season three couples that episode, plus one alternate who didn't get to film. So they had to wait and just in case, then they get to go. Uh, uh, so we wait, we wait some more. Eventually the producer and the creator of the show come to introduce themselves and give us some tips. So here are the tips. Okay. Momentum is key. Don't hesitate. 
Tip one. Tip two, you want to glide over the big balls looking forward, not down. One popular myth is to do the bunny hop over. He tells us that's not the way to do it. Ironically, an inside friend of mine told me, no, that's actually the way to do it. Where you hop, jump one, gather yourself, then jump in the next. That is the best way to do it. Getting the momentum way is very hard to get to get it. But yes, if you do the bunny hop, you can actually get through them. It might take longer, though, but he's trying to tell you to bounce because he wants you to fall. Uh, the best way to cross. But I sense the producer is enticing us to wipe out and not play it sense. Hence, tip, tip three, if you're going to wipe out, wipe out in style. Don't just land feet first and be boring. If you're already falling, flail around and land funny, as that will get you on TV. He made several points. Red flag number one. Several points. If you want to be on TV, make sure you make it a big landing. Uh, I mean, he's right, uh, but the intentions are clear right out the gate. Uh, tip, tip four, talk on the course, especially to each other. A lot of people are full of energy, but then they put their game face on, which is great for you to try and win, but it's boring to watch and won't get you on TV unless you're an actual winner. And so he very clearly warns you, like, do these rules or we're not putting you on television. Like, this, oh, that's how they sort of hold it over. You will not be on TV if you don't do this. We'll just cut you from the show. Um, he wishes us luck, introduces us to a scoring timing official who tells us that he'll, we'll be running the course together tag team. He says they'll take us out to see the course, get more specific. Uh, some point a few hours later, they begin to size us with life vests, and then they put these ankle guards on. I remember this. Uh, super annoying foot lace things, straps. And, uh, and I remember the, the crew guys like, yeah, we broke a lot of ankles last season, so hopefully these will, these will help. I was like, and, and that was coupled with when I remember we did the, the sign the contract the, war, the sign your life away contract when we did the audition. We we're like, does anyone actually get injured? They're like, no, no, no one gets, no one ever gets injured. Never. No, it's so, super normal. It's super safe. Lies. That was lies number one. Because clearly they were breaking ankles like crazy. Finally let us outside. For a lot of it, we were sort of waiting inside because they didn't want us to see things. But finally we were able to wait outside and we could see sort of this part of the course teasing us. Steps to nowhere. Finally, we get to see the course, and here it is for your enjoyment. So this was the big surprise. The steps were leading to this, which was this blob thing that we were supposed to be up here, jump on here while our, our, our partner was here, launching them into the air. And then as soon as we landed here, I was, you know, that was going to be me. I was supposed to crawl here, and then a weight was going to drop to launch me. Uh, and uh, more on this, and this is an important one I'm going to come back to, but just so you see what we were in for once we finally saw the course, uh, that's how that works. But I'll come back to that one in a second. Then it was the, uh, the sucker punch wall. Now, they put this silver thing here. I don't know if you've ever noticed it on the show, but the silver, it's a very small ledge you have to crawl upon, and the silver thing there is if you don't touch it, they tell you you'll get a time penalty. So the goal is they want you to do it, so you can't just skip the, each thing. You have to touch things in order for it to work. And then once you're in the middle of it, they, get, they sort of get you. Uh, and I'll explain more of that as we get to that one, too. Uh, but here is the big balls going in, uh, what they, you know, how they work, and that's we have to hop over, and then there was the shake later here, where you have to sort of get through the shake later, land on the ledge and while they're shaking it. Someone has like a thing, and then you run across this bridge. I think they called this one the cheese grater. Uh, but you had to jump off that trampoline into this moving cheese grater thing. There's a trampoline here to try and get through the shapes as it's going. And that was the course. Once you get through this, the course was over. So I was excited because it looked like, all right, this looks doable. I can handle this. Sure. Why not? And here was our blueprint for the course. We really thought we had a shot here and we were planning it by every step of the way. Uh, so we're gearing up in the room. Uh, we're outfitted in the swing room, ready to go out. There's another team that comes up to us. They were super nice uh, and motivate us. They were coming after us. They didn't have to do that. We were all there to compete. But this couple made a point to come in. They were newlyweds, recently came back from the honeymoon. The sweetest couple. They were there to sort of pump us up as we were nervously getting ready to go. While everyone else was given game faces, they were really nice. Uh, more on them in a second. Uh, so we go out there. We get ready. We do our battle cry for the taping. And then they sort of start us. They, they, they're like, all right, horn, go. Now, the time wasn't going to start until I got to the top of the stairs and jumped. Once I hit the bag that was going to launch her, that's when the clock was going to start. As I got to the top of the steps, she had to jump from here and then work her way to the edge of this thing so I could jump up and launch her. Uh, and as soon as she jumped on it, she slipped. And that was her biggest fear was the cold water, actually. She did, and that it was so unfortunate. I felt so bad. Uh, and it took multiple attempts to get her back on the bag. And she's a lot smaller than me, guys. And so she could not get her position on the bag. Uh, and they're yelling at her to hurry up. The crew members are screaming. I was very angry and frustrated at, right at the gate at just how rude they were treating us like meat to sort of hurry up and get in the position. It's like, it's not, how is it our fault that we can't get on your slippery blob bag? Like, don't blame us. You guys didn't design this very well, did you? You didn't think it through. Uh, finally, they get her in position. It takes forever. Uh, and then they're supposed to drop this weight and I'm supposed to go. And as soon as I hit the bag, 
That's when the time was officially going to start. So here we go. Let's watch, shall we? Here it comes, and boom! And bam, she goes, she goes flying. What ended up happening was, as soon as I hit that landing, as soon as I hit that, I slid out myself. It was not big enough for my body mass, clearly. And so I slid off in the water. You can see it right here as I'm sliding off in the water as she's getting launched. I fall off. And so immediately now I have to get not I have to get all the way over here. And rather than have us climb up here, no. They made me go back and jump, but I couldn't jump from the top. They made me jump from here. But there was no way to do a running jump. There were these two stupid little skinny bars. And so I had to try and get on from there. So meanwhile, um, it's water, scuba gear. They're helping me because like, it's deep. We're all trying to get onto this stupid platform. Meanwhile, the clock, keep in mind, the clock's already begun. And so I'm so frustrated. I'm, I'm using all this energy. I try a second time, slide right off. It's wet. There's nowhere to hold. I'm big. It just was impossible for me to get on that, that beanbag. And so uh, on the third attempt, I pull my leg. Like I really hurt my leg and I'm suddenly in severe pain, muscle pain. I can barely move it. And I'm realizing I should just end, but I'm like, I'm going to try and truck through this if I can. Uh, finally, after like literally, I think it was five, six minutes of time already burned. They were like, just skip it. Take the penalty. And I was livid. I was livid because I'd wasted all of my energy trying to get on the stupid bag. I had, I had worked up all this. I'm not in, in shape at, by any stretch of imagination, but I knew I could handle a little bit, get through a eight minute course, but I burned all the time trying to swim and climb for something that wasn't even part of the course. It was completely unfair, completely rigged. And later I learned, as I saw, Everyone had trouble. Anybody who was tall or big couldn't do it. It, it, was, it didn't work for them. It was just falsely rigged. I saw it happen with my own eyes as I was waiting around. They gave the people a chance to start from there right away. I, they learned through me because I was fourth and I was bigger. They learned and they gave them an advantage of starting from higher than I did to help them get on quicker. So the whole thing was completely rigged. There was no fairness whatsoever in this stunt or how the producers handled getting the stunt people on there. The clock should have never started until I got launched was the reality because they had me jump from this point first, which was impossible, and I wasted all the energy, and then they had me try and figure out how to jump from this point, and meanwhile, I, I didn't have to waste that whole first jump attempt. The guy who was big after me, they immediately told him to go up here because they saw that was an easier way to try and do it, but I don't even think he got it. Uh, they let him delay too. So anyway, the whole uh, the whole thing was super frustrating from the get go. After that came this the sucker punch wall. Now this thing is ridiculous. This thing uh, I got pretty far along it. There's me getting punched in the in the gut. Uh, pardon the the little bit of a plumber's crack there. As I'm going through, I touch the silver thing, and I gotta touch this one more nub. I'm like, I can do it. I could totally touch this last nub. I made it through. I'm getting punched. They're spray painting us in the eyes, which we didn't know was going to come. Uh, it, it, that was not fun at all. And I'm like, I can totally get it. And so I, as I go to reach it, it's so small. Look how it's like impossible to grab. It is impossible to get anything on it. And they have this one right here is their prime, prime shot along with this. They have it designed. So as you go for that last one, they got one to punch you straight into the water. The, and it's literally mud water that's so thick and awful, it's impossible to get out. Now, you got to remember, in this, as I'm trying to get out of this disgusting mud water, it is so thick and deep, and the bottom of it's so muddy that you're, my feet are coated in disgustingness right out the gate. So I'm stuck there as I'm trying to get through all this, uh, rolling around on the floor because I can't get up on my leg. And there's no way to crawl up. There's, it's so deep, you can't get a jump up there unless you have massive arm strength. There was no way to get up. So they had this knotted rope at the corner, which is the only place you could get yourself up. And so I, me looking like a fat mess here was just me not being able to stand and being immensely out of breath given the amount of exertion I had to do before the course even really begun, which did prompt some funny jokes from the host. Is that a big ball wearing a life vest? I am a huge fan of John Henson. I was not offended uh, by the jokes and any stretch of the imagination, uh, but that's why I looked like this. Uh, obviously, I'm out of shape, but it, I was, you can see the, the, look at the pain in my face. I am so depressed at how rigged, impossible, I'm hurt. Can I even finish now? Why did they let me do that? In the first place, it wasn't fair. The, you, there's so much frustration and sadness on my face. So I stood here for a while to gather some breath and to wait because I knew if I didn't stand there, they were going to hit me with that stupid thing, right? And so the, 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 the producers, the directors, they were so mad. They're like, move forward, go to the line, go to the line. I'm like, why? So you can just knock me in the water? No. 
I don't want to swim in the water. I need to catch my breath. They did not want anybody to catch their breath. And that's the other red flag I'm trying to prove out as we get through this. Look, I know the whole point of the show is to wipe out, but I didn't expect the meanness, the yelling on the megaphone from the crew of hurry up, go to the line. You're just there to get punched and then they don't care. It's not a game show in any stretch of the imagination, which shocks me because I would think there are actual quiz show game show rules that would sort of prove that this show is not fair at all. There's a cash prize. That's clearly rigged based off of sort of the order you go in and a lot of other things. They need to make that way more clear than, than the thousands of pages that we signed and had to go through. Uh, and they didn't. They did not tell us that. And that's not right. It's not right to have a show where you're right, jockeying for money. You think you have a shot at it and you just don't because the, the cards are stacked against you every step of the way. And they'll give certain contestants advantages based off of when they went. It's not, it's not right at all. I know there's weather conditions and there are things that matter, but when a producer knows, okay, that didn't work. So have them start there and gives that person an extra minute. That's cheating. It's totally cheating. That's not like uh, the course and uh, whatever. That, 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 that's flat out cheating. So I stopped here to catch my breath and they were mad at me for catching my breath. And if I had to catch my breath, I might have drowned, guys. Literally, everything that went through this course, I, I'm shocked I didn't drown because that was the scariest part of it. Thank God they give you these vests. So here I am going off the big balls. Bam! Right in the water, and you, I sink like a stone in that water, even with the vest. Because you're coming from so high, uh, and you're out of breath as you're sinking, that it's, it's brutal. But there you go. There I am. There's me doing the fat backstroke as I try to get back to each level, because I can't swim normally with my leg. I'm out of breath, and my leg doesn't work. Uh, so they sort of make a joke of how slow I am, but, you know, clearly not acknowledging the clear injury where I can't stand, uh, and the fact that they knew it and didn't ask, are you okay? They never once asked me, are you okay, Andy? Uh, and so she goes and does a shake later, as then it's my turn. She falls off pretty quickly. And the shake later, as I <laughs> look so handsome, <laughs> it's a pretty funny look. Uh, as I try to get on there, the shake later is the one place where I get a little bit of advantage because they want you to get on it here. They want you to get on here. And as I'm trying my best, I get in a spot where I know they can't get me. And they're mad. Again, they're like, get up, stand up. I'm like, no, as soon as I stand up, you're going to knock this thing down and you're going to smack me in the face. And of course, <laughs> that's what they did. So here's that moment as I'm going and I immediately launch. Watch how quickly that floor starts dropping. And it drops a lot. Did you see that? It drops so much. And immediately as I'm trying to get up there, they get you right so the, not, the wind is knocked out of you. It is a brutal hit. And yes, it's soft, but no. That hit, I saw stars. I saw stars in that hit because you're so out of breath moving and then immediately look at that i fell so deep in that water you'd be surprised i felt so deep in that water that i i really almost drowned in that moment i was i, I that is what i remember the most of this course being in that water thank god i had that life vest as soon as i like couldn't hold my breath any longer and i there was some water already coming in my mouth but i was out because the vest brought me up thank god in my buoyancy uh but literally i never thought drowning was how it was going to go in the wipeout course but it was and then we did the bounce through the cheese cheese grater and of course i smack right into the wall immediately didn't get through i just fall st straight in the water but some great action shots i got here thanks to the photographer uh and then we get to the end of the course and we celebrate uh and uh as we qu i remember being there as we're celebrating jill wagner coming in and trying to interview and uh i just did not care i was like get me out of here the, the the look on my face as you can see here i'm just so annoyed by the whole process. I'm in pain. And uh, I know we lost. Uh, it wasn't fun in the moment. At the end of the day, like there was times I looked back and I thought, you know what? That was great. But the more I looked back, it made me think of things. As I'm going through my notes to remember, there was also a point where the producer screamed at me to pull up my pants and I realized my belly and butt crack were showing. But at this point, I didn't care and I shrugged them off with a hand in a large, meh. <laughs> I do remember that now that it's there. But as I go through all of this, I remember that the doctors, the visit before I went, I, there was a specific doctor, I don't remember who, I, I'm, it is so I don't know, but the, the qualifying physician test, which is all I had to do, literally made me breathe into a device that I had to keep a ball at a certain height. And I couldn't do it. I tried it like four times. <laughs> couldn't do it. I couldn't get it to the level that he wanted. And you know what the doctor goes to me? Well, you'll, you'll keep working out, you'll get better before the show, right? I said, yeah, 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 cool. All right, you're good. <laughs> clearly, clearly a huge red flag that I should have known better, but I, I, I you know, he, he approved me. 
He said I was okay. But all of this comes to a head because here's the twist. Here's the twist, guys. Now, you remember those wipeout deaths I told you at the beginning of the show? Well, back in 2009, the first death was Tom Sparks, graduate of USC, uh, who was uh, taken from the set of the show, uh, rushed to Cedar sinai Hospital. Uh, two weeks later, suffered brains, brain aneurysms, had to have brain surgery, uh, and died on November 5th. Tom Sparks was part of that couple. That inspired us right before our run. That's right. Tom Sparks was on the show that I was on. He went right after me. And uh, I'm still sort of at a loss of how that happened. And the more I've sat with it, the more frustrated and angry I've been. And I've tried to look deeper into this. I've tried to get into it, but there's really been no story since then. I've asked around and I found out that I think they settled. I think the wife settled the case with ABC. I hope made a lot of money and why she doesn't talk about it anymore. But man, what a tragedy. These two were so young, so amazing, and they died on the course. Now, they say... They say it was because a family member had mentioned, apparently, uh, that uh, he had some pre-existing condition. Uh, spokesman said uh, there was a, I forget, there's someone, someone here said that something happened. And at the end of all, people who runs a show said, you know, the company requires all participants to undergo full physical screening, but it's highly un unlikely that Sparks disease and anti facilisoid antibody syndrome could have been detected. And, and he did not list it on his pre-existing condition. Uh, because apparently some family member sort of mentioned that said that, uh, you know, it was triggered that because I forget who, someone said it. The, fa the father released that to the Mountain Express. And I probably shouldn't have. Uh, probably didn't help their case. Probably made it more complicated. But still, uh, you know, the, when, when I read this and hear that they, you know, all, all the contestants go through full physical screening, I call BS. They let me go through. They barely checked anything with me. I clearly wasn't in shape for this. Guys, after my run, I was on crutches and actually really injured my leg. I was on crutches for weeks afterwards. Uh, and they didn't know what to do. They, there was like literally no help or hospital for me. And I realized after the fact, the reason why there wasn't anyone for me was because Tom was in an ambulance going away. Now, I'd seen the ambulance come. I, we saw it happen. We didn't know what. They sort of played it like nothing. But now in hindsight and knowing, oh, my, my leg problem... I mean, it's it's terrifying to know literally what happened is he apparently on the set of the show, uh, he while he was there, he was having he was uh, he was having a uh, uh, leg pains just like I was. And uh, they grabbed an ambulance and sent him a knee pain right here on the first part of the obstacle course. Producers instructed him to stop his run. An individual close to production told the rap medics noted that he was not ex he was he was experiencing shortness of breath and was taken to a local hospital for further examination. I mean. What's so terrifying is that's exactly what happened to me. I was having, now he had a, he had a, he had a condition. He had like some blood clot condition apparently that was what ultimately caused it. So they say, but man, the, running the course clearly didn't help. And I, I had the same problem jumping up that first thing and hurt my leg and jumping on that, that, that blob, which I feel like you're not supposed to do. That did not feel like a safe thing at all. Like no way they tested it. They didn't even know how to run it themselves. And meanwhile, I'm hurting my leg. Guy after me hurts his knee. And then he, he's, he's out of breath himself. He goes to the hospital and he passes away in the hospital two weeks later after having brain. I mean, this is awful. So yeah, I have a problem with this show. I have a problem with this show because as I was on it, 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 was, all, it was so malicious. You could just tell they didn't care about anybody. I just there was a couple nice one nice crew member sort of sat like a PA person who sort of helped positively try to keep me going. But now clearly the medical staff was busy. Uh, but then as soon as he went away, you'd think they would have come checked on me and, and tried to send me away too. like, hey, we should check if you got an injury, we should make sure you're OK. You should get checked out. You'd think that Disney, ABC, somebody would be responsible, say, all right, we'll make sure we we cover this for, you No, there was no it was all they could do is making sure they, they weren't involved. and It wasn't their fault and that we signed our rights away. So when I, when I think of Tom Sparks, who was such a nice person, and I, I, I don't want to dig up drama for him and, and his family. It seems like they've moved on. I've heard they did settle something, and I hope it was big. I don't know all the details, but I, a source later found out I was on that show and told me sort of off the record, yeah, yeah, it's a big, there's a big legal case brewing and going, and that's why the press never really followed up on it. I've tried to find updates, and it's not there. It's been silence, and they don't really speak about it. Uh, but obviously with this new death... It reminded me because this guy had a heart attack on the course. And honestly, this, this course isn't safe. It's not a safe show. 
it was it was a laugh at the time. We thought it was funny, uh, but the more I've thought thought about it, it's just not very funny. I mean, I, I get it. It's funny. It's funny to watch these idiots like me fall on those big balls. Like we signed up for it and we expect it, but you just sort of expect such a high level production to have their stuff together, you know, to not put our lives at risk. Like that's that's what you sort of expect when you go on a TV show like this that has money that makes a lot of money and pays you twenty dollars beyond even the danger of the show. The fact that the show is unfair also really frustrates me because look, okay, fine. We're going to, we're going to take the risk. We know what our risks are, but then you're not going to equally treat the contestants the same way on each stunt. That's effed up as well. So wipe out, man. I used to love watching you. It's, it seems funny to watch those people fall, but the truth is there's some shady stuff behind the scenes in my opinion. So what do you guys think? Does this look like it was fun? Would you do Wipeout? Or do you think it does sound a little unsafe and unfair? I want to hear your thoughts down below. If you haven't already subscribed here to Popcorn Planet, please consider subscribing. Hit that bell for all alerts and smash that like button to help the engagement. You can also tell me your thoughts. Would you do the course? I want to hear it in the comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. My heart goes out to Tom Sparks and the other individual who died recently and to their families. I'm not here to try and cause more drama. Please leave them alone. But I just want you guys to be aware of all of it as you watch the show that there is a lot more meanness behind the scenes. Maybe they've changed it. I have yet to watch the new season. Uh, maybe there is a whole new way they fix it. I hope so, but I wish they would make that clearer uh, to the viewer because, man, my season did not feel right. Tell me what you think, though, down below. Check out these videos in the meanwhile, and thank you guys so much for watching Popcorn Planet.